How's it going everyone, Taki here. Windows 11 just recently dropped for the Insider program, and I wanted to do a video taking a look at the current batch of gaming handhelds that officially support the OS. We have the Win 2, the Win Max, the Win 3, and the Aya Neo. There are also three other current Windows handhelds from one netbook, but they do not currently support Windows 11 without bypass methods because they don't have a TPM or the chip is disabled in a hidden BIOS entry. These are the GX1, the GX1 Pro, and the current 1X player. Supposedly, these can support Windows 11 with a BIOS update, but there was no BIOS update available to enable TPM when I started working on this video. If one becomes available in the future, I'll take a look at their performance on the OS. The process for upgrading to Windows 11 is actually fairly simple. I didn't film the process on any of the handhelds in this video, but I do have a mini PC that's compatible with Windows 11 that I don't mind updating to show off the process. There are a bunch of different requirements to run Windows 11, but the important one seems to be this TPM 2.0 module. If you have this and the other processor and GPU requirements, you just need to enable telemetry data under diagnostics and feedback and add a Microsoft account that has entered the Insider program. After that, Windows update should show the current Windows 11 preview build. The installation for this update can take a decent amount of time, but after it's done, you'll be in what is essentially a reskin of Windows 10 with some new cool features. I've already gone ahead and installed it on these three devices, but I wasn't able to install it on the Win 3 due to some errors. This would probably require a complete reinstall, which I don't feel like doing, so we will just say that there are currently four devices that officially support Windows 11 at this time. The Aya Neo was the first device that I wanted to update because of the support the OS was supposed to have for Android apps. Unfortunately, there isn't any Android support in this first build of Windows 11, so my plans were thwarted. While I've been using this system, I noticed that this is actually a decent OS for a handheld like this that lacks some of what is available in other handhelds for a few reasons. The first reason is the rather decent typing experience that you get with a fully customized keyboard. You can come in here and change the layout, but this is the layout that is best for this device. You can't make this smaller, which is unfortunate because this takes up a lot of the screen by default. If you go into the settings, you have a few important options. You can select from the available themes and they will update on the fly. I have the clear case Neo, so basically any of these options work well. I plan on making a custom keyboard theme when I have some free time. In terms of typing on this keyboard, it's actually very easy. There's predictive type on this keyboard, which is occasionally useful, but it will probably take some getting used to. As it stands, activating the keyboard does come with some strange bugs currently due to how it tends to rearrange what is on screen. When you are holding this in your hands, you shouldn't have any issues typing what you need. Unfortunately, the Neo doesn't support voice typing like the other devices in this video since it lacks a microphone, and this is actually a very good option for entering in text. Being able to use the Neo became a lot easier due to the improvements they've made in order to make Windows 11 better for tablets. This is one of the things that was really lacking in Windows 10, and the improvements can be felt across the various form factors that we have available. In terms of system performance, I noticed all of the devices ran a little hot initially, and I think this was due to some post-installation processes that are going on in the background after you first boot into Windows 11. My times when I first started to use this were a little high for idle, but if I open up hardware info now, you can see that my CPU temps are sitting around 40, with the fans on quiet as the system is sitting at idle. The CPU temps were in the mid-70s on my first boot and the fans were going crazy, so I was a little worried that this OS was going to be a complete bust for this device. One last interesting feature that I saw is the ability to set per-app performance profiles. This is a feature that I've seen in some custom Android builds. I don't know what happens when you have two conflicting apps loaded at the same time with different profiles, so I assume this just takes into account what window is currently in focus. It's a cool little modification. When it comes to actual gaming performance, I didn't see any improvements or negative impacts from running this OS versus Windows 10. This is actually the most seamless OS upgrade that I've ever had when it comes to the Neo.
your best, huh? I'm lucky enough to have the version of the Win2 that supports Windows 11, so I updated that as well. The Win2 has a pretty good keyboard, but it's now a whole lot easier to enter in text on the device thanks to the improved voice typing feature. I was very surprised at how fast this is at entering in text, and I can see this being the go-to option for devices like the Win3. This doesn't really matter on the more powerful handhelds in this video, but upgrading the Win2 deleted all of my custom resolutions that I had made, and this handheld really needs them if you're going to get any decent performance out of demanding 3D games. It's easy to add the resolutions back to the device, but it is a little annoying. I also ran a benchmark on the Win2 to check if there was any performance loss in the upgrade, and the score that I got is right around where it should be. The final handheld that I upgraded is actually the last good GPD device that I really liked. This unfortunately launched really close to the release of Tiger Lake, but it has more than enough power to play a lot of games, and it's the device that I use the most when I'm going through my less demanding backlog of Steam games. Since this is already a very capable laptop, the benefits of Windows 11 aren't as obvious as they are on the other three devices in this video, but the touchscreen seems to be a lot more responsive than it was before. Beyond that, gaming performance is pretty much exactly the same. So that's it for this video. Windows 11 is going to be very important for the next generation of handhelds that are going to launch next year, but it was still cool to see it working on three generations of handhelds in this video. Are there any changes that you're excited about in Windows 11 or improvements that you hope Microsoft makes to the OS before it fully launches? Let me know in the comment section below. Happy gaming everyone. Talkie out.